Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a nice exponential equation. We have x to the power x equals 3 to the power x plus 54, and we're going to be solving for x values. Now, I'll be presenting two methods, but not necessarily both methods are going to work, right? There's no guarantee that they're both going to work, but I'll still talk about different approaches. And if you know of any other way to do it, please let us know in the comment section down below. If you have any questions, always feel, feel free to ask. That's the best way to learn. And if you like complex numbers, I have another channel called A plus BI, where I go over basics of complex numbers and do a problem a couple times a week. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at this problem. How do you solve exponential equations? Well, if you had something like 3 to the power x plus 4 is equal to 27, this would be fairly easy. Why? Because 27 can be written as 3 to the third, and from here we get the same base, so on and so forth. And there's only variables on one side. What would happen if you had something like this? x to the power x plus 54 equals 3 to the power x plus 54, and this equation would still be easy to do because the exponents are the same. So whether the exponents are the same or the bases are the same, the problem will be easy to solve. But what happens if they're different, and to make matters worse, the base is also a variable, same variable, x to the power x, kind of like a super exponential, right? So things gonna get, are going to get more complicated. But with most exponential equations, we use logarithms because we want to bring down the exponents, especially when they are variables, right? For example, if you had something like, you know, uh, 3 to the power x equals 7, you will probably use logarithms to solve it because there's no immediate way to write 7 as a base or power of 3, so you would probably just use logarithms. So why not use the logarithms at least for our first method, okay? So let's go ahead and do that, and for this purpose, uh, natural log works the best because it's more natural than other ones. So ln x to the power x equals ln 3 to the power x plus 54, ln representing natural logarithms. Some people call it nap Napier logarithms, but I would call it natural log, and it's just backwards because I think it comes from French or something like that. Anyways, so properties of logs say that uh, you can bring these exponents to the front, so that becomes x ln x equals x plus 54 multiplied by ln 3. Now, looking at this expression, you might be thinking, okay, wouldn't it be nice if x was 3, so that we could get ln x equals ln 3, at the same time, x being equal to x plus 54. But unfortunately, that's not the case. It's not going to work like that. Okay, so we don't really have an immediate solution. Obviously, that would be super easy in that case. And you can tell by replacing x equals 3 with the original, in the original equation that this is not going to work. But at least we tried. Can we do other things? Maybe putting the variables like x and x plus 54 on the same side and putting the natural logs on the same side still would not really turn into anything helpful. Maybe there's a way to work this, but it's up to you guys. If you somebody knows how to do it from here, let us know in the comment section down below. Okay, so let's go ahead and approach this problem differently. And the reason why logging both sides didn't work in this case is because we have too many variables and we have functions of different types like we have the polynomial and other polynomial. We have the logarithmic function and a constant. It's a jumbo mumbo. Let's go ahead and do this slightly differently. Or maybe very differently. Okay. The reason why we use the second method is because it's usually cooler. That's what I think at least. And you're free to think otherwise. But uh, the thing is, we're going to be using properties of exponents. So I think it makes sense to talk about them. For example, if you multiply two exponentials with the same base, then you can add their exponents. Or if you divide them, you subtract. Uh, there's another one that is going to be helpful for us. Uh, like when you multiply two things with the same exponent, not the same base, they can also have the same base. And b equals a is okay, but it uh, doesn't have to be that way. We can multiply the bases and use that x as a common exponent. And obviously, this property also works with division. And that's exactly what we need here. Why? Because we have the same exponent. Do we? 
Well, sort of. We're going to get there, okay? So bear with me while we work this out. So let's go ahead and make it nicer by separating the exponents. What do I mean by that? Well, from the first property, this property works both ways, right? If you have a sum of exponents, then you can split it up. So now 3 to the power x plus 54 can be written as 3 to the x times 3 to the power 54. By the way, 3 to the power 54, don't try to evaluate it. I mean, you can use Desmos, obviously, or Wolfram Alpha. It's a very large number. It's a very, very, very large number, okay? Just to imagine what that looks like. Well, maybe we shouldn't talk about it yet. Okay, anyways, you get the idea. It's a very large number, so don't try to evaluate it. And even if you evaluated it, it wouldn't help. Would it? I don't think so. So this is what we have now. We have x to the x equals 3 to the x times 3 to the 54. And what did I say? I'm going to use this property. How do I use it, though? Well, I have two expressions with the same exponent. I'm going to bring them together. So let's divide both sides by 3 to the power x. Again, you don't need to evaluate this number because we're, we're going to make it nicer anyways. And now we have the same exponent. So we can now write this as x over 3 to the power x with a single base. And then it is equal to 3 to the power 54. So that brings us to this point. And you might be thinking, is this any better than the original equation? Yes, tiny bit better. And obviously, maybe much better. Now, you might, okay, you might do the following. If the base is x over 3 and 3 on the right-hand side, is it possible to set x over 3 equal to 3? Yes, as long as you set x equal to 54 at the same time. But obviously, these two are inconsistent. If x is 9, it's not going to be 54 and vice versa. So, this direct association did not work. Maybe you can kind of work it out, like by playing with the base. Write the 54 as a product of two numbers, like maybe 6 and 9, and then kind of separate it like 3 to the 6 to the 9. Obviously, I know that this is not going to work, but I'm just saying there is a way to do it such that the base is one-third of the exponent. Does that make sense? x over 3 is one-third of x. But there's a better way to do it. You don't really need to go into great lengths to fix this problem because there's definitely a much better approach. And this is what it is. The base is x over 3. Why don't we just go ahead and change the exponent so that it becomes the same? Well, you could also change the right-hand side or you could also change the exponent I mean, the base, I mean, you could cube both sides. That would work, but that would bring in bigger numbers. I don't want that. To avoid it, I should scale down. Make sense? Okay, I hope it does. So here's what I'm going to do next. I'm going to raise both sides to the power one-third. And you can do that on both sides. basically equivalent to cube rooting both sides, which is okay, right? Now, what it does is x is multiplied by x uh, one-third, that becomes x over 3, and 54 divided by 3, or 54 times one-third, is 18. So you get 3 to the power 18. Beautiful. Now, we accomplish one thing, which is super important. The base and the exponent are the same on the left-hand side. So we need to do the same thing on the right-hand side, and that can be done very easily. So what we can do is notice that 18 can be written as 2 times 9, and this can be written as 3 to the second to the power 9, which is 9 to the power 9. And it's just awesome because now the base and the exponent are the same on both sides, which is super duper helpful because now you can say, hey, there is a one-to-one -one correspondence. X over 3 needs to be 9. Yes, exactly. That's what it is. So X over 3 equals 9 gives us X equals 27. And that is the only solution. Of course, I'm talking about real solutions. If you're looking for complex solutions, then I have another channel, which I already told you, didn't I? A plus BI. Make sure to check it out and let us know if you have any questions about complex numbers or anything else. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care. Don't forget to check out CyberMath and A plus BI and bye bye.